Hey there, how's it going everyone? So I'm looking for a way to streamline the process of transplanting these young seedlings out into the garden. Right now this Tulsi here is ready to either be repotted to a larger like plastic cup uh, where it can further get rooted before bringing it out to the garden. But actually these plants would be just fine going straight out to the garden right now as we're no longer getting down to any freezing temperatures. We've got some nice drizzle in the forecast over the next few days so I'd love to get these out right now. I mean, you talk about a soft landing for transplants. This week would be the perfect time to get some of these younger seedlings out in the garden. The overcast sky, the light drizzling rain that we're getting, everything's just gonna take off. So really, the only issue that's holding me back from doing that is that if I put these out in the garden at this young tender size right now, they're gonna get eaten alive, probably by the pill bugs, known as roly polies, and perhaps by snails or slugs. I have been keeping the chickens in the coop quite a bit lately. And my chickens, which are my primary method of pest control, do a wonderful job dealing with the slug and snail population. Not so good with the pill bugs. They do eat them, but I'm still dealing with issues. Anyway, right now the chickens are most of the time being kept in the coop during this late winter, early spring season while I'm getting these younger plants established. Uh, one technique that I do use is to put plant protection cages around young plants. But when you've got hundreds of new plants getting plugged out into the garden, it's easier just to keep them in the coop. And they don't seem to mind it much. They've got some chicken crumble supplement over there. Plenty of greens, plenty of worms. But they sure will be happy when I let them out full time once again. Isn't that right, ladies? So the technique I'm going to use to get these seedlings out into the garden without having to repot them up first and let them grow up a little bit more is to actually protect them individually using just a simple plastic cup with the bottom cut out. These cups are just going to go right over the plant like so. Now the bottom portion of the cup is going to be slightly embedded into the soil. And this is going to prevent those pill bugs or roly polies from climbing up the side. They don't climb well. Now if you want to stop slugs and snails however, they can still climb up and over these cups. So in that case, I'm applying a little bit of copper tape to the top half of the cup. And that should stop the snails and the slugs from passing through up and over into the cup. And here's what the copper tape looks like. This is relatively inexpensive and it can be purchased from multiple suppliers in various lengths and widths. I do prefer the two inch width. And the copper won't have any effect on the pill bugs, but it's said to create a reaction with the slime that's on the slugs and snails body. So when they cross this, it causes a disruption in their nervous system, similar to like an electric shock. And if you look online, you're gonna find various claims that either this doesn't work or it does work with all sorts of tests. Uh, you know, this is kind of an old school technique has been used a long time. Growing up, we used a copper sheet metal that was a couple inches thick and we put those around our strawberry patches and such and it worked for us. So I'm confident in recommending this technique, but do your own research and figure out what's right for you. Now, pill bugs, snails and slugs can all be baited as well. So if you just use a small little dish like the bottom of a plastic cup or a tuna can, a cat food can, or even a plant saucer, similar to this. Now, in the case of pill bugs, you can literally put uh, different food scraps. I've got some potato wedges here. You can use mango peels, melon peels, uh, even beer. And that will attract those pill bugs into here. And you can basically collect these in the morning. Early in the morning is the best time as they're mostly feeding throughout the evening. And you can decide what you want to do with them from there. Now because it's raining, I'm not going to be using beer at this time, it's just going to dilute it, overfill the cup. And I also put in these little drainage holes, little slits on the side there. That way, uh, the rain will just drain right out of the cup and the pill bugs can still make their way in. Now this won't be very effective for slugs and snails. Slugs and snails, you're going to want to use beer. They'll crawl in and they'll drown in the beer. And I'd suggest using something a little larger like the plant saucer or a cat food can. And in either case, you want to basically just slightly bury this so that the rim of the cup is at the soil surface or at the surface of your wood chips so that the bugs, the snails can crawl right in. So if you're interested in making these little bait cups out of the plastic cups, then when you're cutting the bottoms off of your cups, you can cut a little bit higher on the plastic cup. That way you can get both a plant protection cup and a bait tray at the same time. Now I'm just going to quickly demonstrate for you just how easy it is to actually cut these cups. So all you need is a pair of kitchen scissors. If you're just going to cut the bottom off the cup, you can start by making a little slit. Like that. Then you just work your way around the cup. Just using the very end of the scissor is good enough. 
these scissors aren't even that sharp so you don't need a really good quality pair of scissors it would help but and it's that easy now if you want to make both a bait tray and a plant protection cup here's how I go about doing that just put a little crease in the cup like so so that I can get my scissors on there and that'll give you a little starting hole there so you can start to work your way around the cup with the scissor And you can clean your cut up a little bit if you want and there you have it so to apply the copper tape this is very easy you just want to cut a long enough strip to make it all the way around the cup and you just peel off the backing this stuff is very sticky very tacky And just work your way around. Because the cup is tapered, it's going to be a little looser towards the bottom portion. You just push that down. And there are many different ways to apply this copper tape throughout the garden for slug and snail defense. You could put this around the entire border of a raised bed garden. You could wrap it around a five gallon plant container. You can make larger rings to protect a patch of something that you're growing. So you could slice up a five gallon bucket or a five gallon growing container, wrap it with the tape, have the same effect. So I will be employing all these techniques and we'll be doing follow up videos in the future. So stay tuned for that. One other thing I want to mention is that these little plant protection cups are totally reusable. So don't just throw them away after one season. Uh, they're probably only going to be used about a month or so. After that, collect them, put them in your shed, keep them with your garden supplies, and you can use these several years in a row. Now before I get started here, I wanted to quickly address a question that's been coming into the channel quite a bit lately. Many folks, newer viewers especially, have been wondering, what is this digging tool that I'm always seeing using in my garden? Well, this is a dig dig or a hori hori tool. And this is actually like my favorite tool that I own as far as getting my plants into the ground for weeding. It has all sorts of applications. One edge of this blade is serrated so you can cut through roots and such. Um, it's a heavy duty steel blade that goes all the way through the handle. So it's very strong. It's not going to bend like a trowel. So if you want to learn more about this tool or pick one up for yourself, I will leave a link below this video in the description box to Amazon where I got this. And I'm really not too concerned about hardening off these basil plants. The weather is very mild for the foreseeable future. So I think the overcast skies, the drizzle we're getting, and the mild temperatures are accommodating to put these plants directly out into the garden. And in case you didn't know, hardening off is where you bring plants that have been growing indoors or in a greenhouse and you slowly acclimate them over a week or two to the outdoor temperature before you plug them into the ground. So I'm going to be scattering out these Kapoor basil plants all throughout the garden design. This looks like a good spot right here. The main thing when doing this is that you make sure you get all the mulch cleared away down to the level of the soil so you can really make sure there's no pill bugs in the area where you're planting. Otherwise you're going to trap a pill bug in the cup and you don't want to do that. Worm in the hole, worm in the hole. And here's a look at those beautiful roots. Again, coming right out of this jiffy pot. Just goes right through the netting. And I'm going to be using a bit of this mycos, which is a mycorrhizal inoculant. This is just a great way to expand the reach of the roots of the plant that you're planting so that it can get out further into the soil and uptake more nutrients, more water. It can be very helpful. All right, so we got our plant. Just going to work that cup into the soil a little bit. And there you have it. And that one's done. I'm also going to install a pill bug bait station here. So maybe we can get a visual. 
of what I actually stopped from coming over here to eat my basil plant. I'm using the potato kind of like a ramp so they can easily crawl down into there. And we'll check back on this tomorrow morning, see how it looks. And I think I'm going to plant another basil now over here. Sorry, Mr. Worm. And I'm gonna install one of these pill bug bait traps over at the edge of this hugel culture as well. Shared with you guys a few days ago how my longevity spinach was starting to reemerge for the spring. And look at that, the leaf is now eaten down to a nub. That's pill bugs. See if I find any one. Well, there's one right there. Just a little guy, but sure does eat a lot. So in this case, we'll see if just putting a bait trap without actually protecting the longevity spinach does the trick. So I think you guys got the idea. I'm going to continue planting these out now. Like I said, we'll continue to update you guys on the progress. I want to thank you all for watching. Until next time, this is Dan from PlantAbundance.com. Wishing you all a great rest of your day. I'll be talking to you again soon. Take care.